Hi friends, welcome to another episode of Moments with Mom and Dad. Today I want to talk to you about something that's just been stirring in my heart and it is the word loving kindness. In the Hebrew it's the word has said used in scripture and when we're reading especially through the Psalms it will be used as either the word loving kindness or the word mercy. I wish that the translators had always used the word loving kindness in the translation because sometimes people they'll see the one word oh that just means God's kind to us and then they see mercy oh well that's when he doesn't give us what we deserve but we're going to talk about this word loving kindness it's a powerful is, word is it the same as the word agape in the new testament yes it is it it would be equal to the word agape in the new testament which we're going to look at because both of them are a descriptor of not just what God has, but who God is. Mm -hmm. um, and in the New Testament, we're, we use that word associated agape with who God is. God is love. Um, it is who he is. It is the motivation of why he does what he does in the lives of humanity, not just our lives as believers. And the word loving kindness is the equal to it over in the Old Testament. So I want to read a scripture to you and we'll jump in from there. It's found in Psalms 36. It says, your mercy or has said loving kindness, O Lord, is in the heavens your faithfulness reaches to the clouds your righteousness is like the great mountains your judgments are a great deep O lord you preserve man and beast how precious is your loving kindness O god therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings they are abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house and you give them to drink from the rivers of your pleasure. For with you is the fountain of life, and in your light we see light. Oh, continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your righteousness to the upright in heart. That word, loving kindness, is actually a covenant term. Um, when two people would cut a blood covenant together, loving kindness is the word that's used to describe how they treat each other, their heart intention towards each other, the very motivation. You would not enter into a covenant with the thought of breaking it. That's like unheard of mm -hmm. because the covenant not only embraced you, but all your unborn children as well. And so two covenant partners were disposed to show each other loving kindness. And here in scripture, um, because when we walk through the Old Testament, it is the old covenant that's being unveiled to us. And in this scripture, it's talking about God's loving kindness. And I read this scripture on purpose because I want you to see, even before he starts talking about loving kindness, he's talking about this vastness. It reaches to the heavens. Um, it's talking about like no limits in all of the scriptures then it begins to talk about who you are, God, and then your loving kindness that's poured out to us. And so um, I want to get across to you that our Father is disposed to show us loving kindness. That's his attitude towards us mm -hmm. in all of his actions. There's a scripture that we all know. It's found in Psalms 23. Um, very end, it says goodness and mercy. Again, it's that word has said loving kindness will follow us all the days of our life. Mm -hmm. And actually that word follow there means pursue. It pursues us. And this is a positive use of that word pursue because everywhere else, when it talks about pursue, it's your enemies pursuing you. They're on your tail. They're hunting you. They, they're following you like a bloodhound on the scent pursuing you. That scripture is talking about how loving kindness is pursuing us. It's really talking about the heart of our father, God. And, you know, um, 
often when we are ministering to people and instructing and discipling people, we, we are discipling them on man pursuing God, that our hunger to know him. But the flip side of this is God's pursuit of man. Mm -hmm. Loving kindness is that term that shows his pursuit of man. What's your thoughts on this? Well, my original, my initial thought is how in First John uh, chapter two, it talks about uh, following the command of God, and in the Bible it says, "Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself." And in communicating that to an Old Testament uh, believer, follower of God, uh, it was something that they could never attain to mm -hmm. because they did not have the nature of God on the inside. Yeah. But in 1 John talks about the commandment that was given in the old, the old commandment that you received is now new because Jesus is in you and your nature is different. You have the nature of love on the inside of you. And so it's not about striving to release something that you don't have. Yeah. It's, it's about discovering the nature of God's loving kindness that's already on the inside of you. There's another scripture that says concerning the love of God, Paul writing to Timothy says, you know, uh, or to the Thessalonians, he says, you don't need me to take, tell you anything because you are already taught yourself by God concerning the love of God. And so the Father is teaching us how to love like he loves. And even though the occasions to love, sometimes we may not feel like it, we're called to love the unlovely. We're called to love our enemies and to pray for them. Uh, yet, it's a lot easier when we can do it from our new created spirit, from our new created nature, than it is trying to physically yeah. strive to and happen. build something up. Yeah. Correct. I think one thing that's really important in this revelation uh, that to me is freeing um, is because people still struggle when, um, when they walk through a difficult time or when maybe they think prayer isn't answered as fast as they would like or the way that they would like it to be answered because they think they know the plan of God better than God knows his plan, is they end up questioning, do you really love me, God? Um, if you did, why didn't you move in this situation faster? Da, 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 da. We all know those thoughts that bombard our brain. Um, and it's when you understand the loving kindness of the Lord, that he is always disposed on our behalf to demonstrate loving kindness and it pursues us, it settles the question of God's willingness mm -hmm. for us. Because most people struggle in that area. Um, they know God is able, they question if he's willing to move on their behalf or they think God plays favorites because that person looks like they're getting more blessings than I'm getting. And those kind of things really are an indicator of a small picture of who God is and what he has done for us, but they trip us up in our faith. Mm -hmm. And so why a subject like this is so important is because it's impossible to have faith in a God you don't trust. And the more his nature is unveiled to us and loving kindness is, is his action that initiates everything that he does towards man because he's the initiator in everything. He initiated covenant. He initiated this new covenant. He abounds towards us in Christ Jesus. It's loving kindness that is his nature. It's who he is that makes him disposed to be that way. And the more that this anchors in our heart, the more it will settle questions 
um, that we're not robbed by that thoughts that God doesn't really love me. Mm -hmm or you're out of favor with God, or something like that. Because Jesus is, you know, Romans says, basically, I'm gonna put it in my own words, in Romans chapter eight, it says, basically, God can't demonstrate how willing he is any more than he gave Jesus, freely gave him on our behalf. And so I just encourage you, meditate, um, search out the scriptures, that talk about loving kindness and mercy in the Old Testament. Do a word search on that word has said and ask the Lord, Lord, make this real to me. Help me to grow in my understanding of what has said really is. Jesus defines it one way when it comes to all of the things that are part of our daily needs. Um, our job, our clothing, our housing. He's saying, if God clothed the lily of the field, if God takes care of the birds of the air, he turns around and says these simple words, how much more will your heavenly father give good things mm -hmm. to those who ask? Demonstrating yeah. his loving kindness, yeah. how much more? I mean, that, that is packed full of loving kindness. Those words. I, I love the image that the psalmist David gives us in Psalm 23, talks us about the Lord leading us in paths of righteousness, and then ends it by saying, goodness and loving kindness follow us all the days of our life. And if we could just imagine that, even in our daily devotion, uh, imagine the goodness of God, which is another wonderful revelation yes. we've talked about yes. before. Yes. But the goodness of God and the loving kindness of God following us, you can't hardly have a bad day. Yep. Even no matter how many mistakes that you make, no matter how many uh, bad things are done to you or circumstances that surround you, when God's goodness and mercy follow you through that day, uh, right up to the time you lay your head down, you can't ever have a bad day. So I'm going to close it by reading uh, this portion of scripture, something out of it again. And I want you to meditate on this and just say, God, I want this to be real in my life. It says that it's talking about us. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings. That's covenant resting in covenant, they are abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house. Not my house, not your house, his house. Abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house and you give them to drink from the rivers of your pleasure. Boy, that is so rich in the heart of the Father God. He wants us to feast on the abundance of his house. He wants us to live drinking from the river of his pleasure, loving kindness. And so I encourage you, seek out the loving kindness, the heart of the Father that's disposed to you, because as much as you want it, he wants to demonstrate it. That's who he is. God bless you guys. Until we see you again real soon, remember that Jesus loves you, that your Father loves you, and we do too. We thank God for you every day. And thank you for being a part of Dulos Global Ministries. Till we see you again, bye-bye.